Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over recursion and how you apply it to programming problems, so how you write recursive methods. So I'm going to do an introduction of recursion and then at the end I'll do a demo in Java of how you apply um, or how you do recursively integer exponentiation. So if you have b to the n where b is an integer, how do you write a method to solve that recursively for any integer b and n? All right, so first let's go over what is recursion. So recursion is basically where you solve a problem by splitting up a larger problem into smaller but identical subproblems, and then solve those until you get to a base case. And the base case lets you then go back and solve the larger problems. So for recursion, a common method that you write in programming is the recursive method to solve n factorials. So if you're given an n, what is, where n is an integer, what is the factorial of that number? So 3 factorial is, for example, 3 times 2 times 1, and 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the equation for this is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 dot 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 until you eventually get to 1, which is 1 factorial times 1, which is 0 factorial. So the idea with recursion is that n factorial is really n times n minus 1 factorial, because this subsection is itself n minus 1 factorial. So to write a recursive method, you need three requirements in order to make sure your program doesn't crash and that it doesn't go into an infinite loop. You need a recursive case, you need at least one or more base cases, and you also need termination. So you need to just make sure it terminates. The recursive case is where the algorithm solves subproblems by calling itself. The base case is where the algorithm is solved without calling itself. And termination is just a condition that recursive cases must eventually lead to base cases. So let's go over how you would solve the algorithm to do integer exponentiation, and then I will show the demo code and run it. All right, so when we think of integer exponentiation, b to the n is going to be b times b times b times b dot 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 times b, where the number of b's is equal to n. So you're going to do, so b to the third is b times b times b, and so on and so forth. So you get the idea. So the way you can do this or think of this recursively is that b to the n is equal to b times b to the n minus 1. So b times, this is n minus 1. And so the recursive case is going to be if n is greater than 0, you're going to have a recursive case, and if b is less than 0. And the base case is going to be when n is equal to 0, because we know that b to the 0 is going to equal 1 always, regardless of what integer b is. And then if n is greater than 0, b to the n is going to be b times the method call b to the n minus 1. For when n is less than 0, there's two ways of thinking about it. So you can think about it similar to this case, where uh, in this case you're going to recursively decrease n by 1. Um, the opposite would be that you do 1 over b times the exponent of b n plus 1. So you have a number that's less than 0 and you increment by 1 each time and eventually you're going to get to 0. If you're already greater than 0, if you decrement by 1, each time you run the method you're going to decrease by 1 and you'll eventually get to 0. So you satisfy termination in either case. Another way of thinking about this is this is equal to 1 over, so b to the negative n is equal to 1 over b to the n. So you can also think of this as 1 over exp b to the negative n. So the reason this works is because you know that n is less than 0, so when you do n that's a negative times a negative in front of it, you're going to get a positive, and so you're going to actually activate the loop that is the condition that n is greater than 0. And you'll eventually reach 0 again, and that's your base case, so you have termination. 
So if you actually write out this code, it's going to look like the following. This is a little demo. So we have public class demo, then the main method, and also a static method that is the exponent method that we're creating. So the main method, it says enter a base and then the exponent, and then it's going to do integer exponentiation by calling exp with a base argument and an exponent argument passed into it. So the recursive method part is here. So it takes in the base and the exponent, if e is 0, so if the exponent is 0, that's your base case, and that is always going to be equal to 1, no matter what the base case, what the base is. Else, if the exponent is greater than 0, then you're going to return b times the recursive case, which is b to the n minus 1, or e minus 1. And then else is going to be cases where it's not greater than or equal to 0, so it has to be less than 0, the exponent. So that's going to return 1 one over the recursive call to b to the negative e or negative n. So if I compile this, I'm just going to cd to my desktop where the code is, and I'm going to compile it first, and then I'm going to run it. So it says enter the base and then the exponent, so let's do 2 to the 3. So 2 to the 3 is equal to 8, which is correct. And we can do 2 to the negative 1, for example, that gives you a half. And if we do 4 to the 0, we get 1. So that's a test of three cases, and it looks like the code is correct. So that's just a brief little intro into recursion and how you can write recursive methods specifically in Java.